has to be the most highly educated road crew ever. A bunch of MIT researchers ecstatic about doing something that would disgust most of us. They're peering into the sewers. 70% of what's down there is poop and pee, and in it, clues to our diet and health. What makes someone want to go into the sewers and look at what's there? If you think about, you know, being able to tell close to real time when infectious diseases or, um, uh, yeah, you have spikes in various types of um, human behavior, things like that start to happen, that would be hugely valuable for a community. At the center of this experiment, run by an elite American institution, is Canadian Nusha Gailey. So this guy, it actually suspends from street level here, the top of the manhole. It intakes sewage water. There's a pump here, and it passes that water through a filter that's in the robot. The robot, by the way, is called Luigi, and its predecessor is Mario, so named for the video game characters who travel around in the sewers. One of the holy grails of this project, during its inception, the thing that uh, was the goal of the project was to be able to identify viral outbreaks. Jessica Snyder is one of the researchers at MIT. The sewer sensor can find 50,000 different bacteria and viruses, and in time, we'll be able to analyze what's happening immediately, texting authorities when necessary, though it's not yet that advanced. We have better planning about when medical support will be able to um, kind of anticipate these outbreaks and help mitigate them. The technology is already being used in Kuwait, which is trying to reduce the enormous salt intake of its people. The sewers hold the answers to changing trends. In New York, it's not salt, but sugar. One way to track whether the ban on supersized fizzy drinks actually did anything is, over many months, to monitor the sewers. When we talk to, let's say, healthcare practitioners, they're really excited about the potential of us being able to give them like an early warning system for infectious disease. However, when, on the other hand, when we talk to, um, let's say, designers and planners, um, they get really excited about us being able to compare different neighborhoods to one another. So let's say, what are the differences between a high density residential neighborhood versus a suburban low density neighborhood? Do we see more biomarkers for obesity or diabetes in the low density neighborhood because people are more car dependent? Boston is using the data to track where heroin is being used because it all ends up down here after passing through a human. And that allows the city to target health and police resources to very specific neighborhoods. In the meantime, all those scientists, they'll continue to toil down in the sewers. David Common, CBC News, Boston.